In your opinion, does succession planting have to be the exact same crop? We'll talk about it. Hey y'all, it's Anna from Mimsy's Garden. You can call me Mims, just like my friends. If you'll recall, right here behind the potatoes was a row of spinach. So I harvested the baby spinach this morning. I've got spinach planted in other places, so I'm not going to succession plant spinach here, but I am putting another crop here. I'm going to plant some cream zipper peas that uh, Miss Patty from Southern Blessed Homestead was gracious enough to send me some more of. She sent me a few last year to try, and I planted those, and they did really well, and uh, it just wasn't a lot of them and she had extra this year so she sent me some more and I'm also going to be saving seed from what I plant this year. I've got a row towards the back of the garden back there, a small row, and then I'm going to put another small row here. And I will succession plant that same crop throughout the summer. So I've harvested the spinach and all I'm going to do is just kind of fluff that soil. I do have drip tape under there. I want to get these little bitty weeds out. There's a little bit of them, as you can see, and just kind of fluffing the earth will take care of those. So I've come through and disturbed the soil a little bit. And because peas do not require an extreme amount of nutrients, and I had amended the soil pretty well right before I had planted the spinach, I'm gonna leave it alone and just put my pea seeds in the ground. It's overcast, guys, so that makes good planting days. That way the plants don't go through shock. But since we're going to get a slight drizzle of rain, I'm gonna go ahead and put my seeds in the ground and cover them and not add extra water. I do water. have drip irrigation under here. Um, the ground is moist because we've been getting rain, so I'm just going to plant my seeds. It should be raining again any moment, so I'm not going to have to water them in. I like days like that. Along the row, I put two seeds every couple of inches, and that way, hopefully, we'll get a good stand of peas on this row. And I'll just come along behind. You crumble a little dirt over there, over each one, and tap it down, and watch them grow. You have a farmer's tan and a gardener's hands. Huey and Louie, the rabbits got some of the excess spinach, not much because they're still babies, and the ra uh, the chickens got the stems. So. No waste there, and I trimmed up the spinach. It's baby spinach. We're gonna enjoy that fresh, and I might even freeze a little bit of it. There wasn't enough to can. That wasn't my intention for that anyway. I just like to, I like a little bit for fresh eating, and I like to grill with it, uh, stuffed chicken, you know, with cream cheese and other spices and put spinach in there and provolone, those kind of things. So, um, the family seems to enjoy that too, and that's how we're succession planting this time. It's not the same crop. So when you hear people talk about succession planting, don't limit yourselves. And don't feel like, well, I'm not gonna do the same crop, so I'm not gonna do anything. Make use of your soil. You've got all summer long to garden. Some things I grow in big quantities and some things I grow in small quantities. and. I I think everybody should do what's good for them. I just hope that people will grow things this year. I hear background noise of, of food shortages and things again. And so if things get crazy, you know, it's a good idea to have a little bit going on for yourself. It's food security and you learn new skill sets and practice makes perfect. As a gardener, you're never going to be, um, or, or you're never going to completely arrive. You're gonna constantly learn new things. Things are always changing. The weather changes, you know, seasons change. 
crops change, what acclimates for your weather is not going to acclimate for mine. So there's a lot to learn and to be open and receptive to. I hope that you uh, take the steps to at least try, even if it's one container. Here's an example of what you can do with one container. How about some romaine lettuce? Or tennis ball size cabbage? Or what about a few carrots? If you can get access to a larger container, like I have my horses that I had sold their old water trough that leaked, well, I just filled the bottom full of limbs and then started adding soil and compost. And then I multi-planted and you can see there's some bib lettuce, some garlic, rosemary. Um, I believe there's some basil. Yep, there's some purple basil in there and some thyme. And I've got two cherry tomato plants in here. I've got them in those little wire cages for now, but I left space to really stake them up because they're going to need it. And uh, there's all kinds of little things growing in there. More romaine lettuce. The hailstorms really beat this stuff to death, but it's coming back. More basil. So it can be done. Grow you something. You don't have to garden on a larger scale uh, to enjoy gardening and give yourself a little food security or just therapeutics. Gardening is very therapeutic. And in times like now, digging in the dirt, it's a, it's a good thing. So I hope you enjoyed um, and learned something and won't limit yourself. And I hope you have a great time gardening. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button.